Hi, I'm Justy. Welcome back to The Skeptheist, an ongoing series of videos in which I discuss the concepts of science and philosophy. Who am I? Well, that's actually irrelevant for the purposes of today's discussion, but if you are interested, here's what I like to do. Check this out! New. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about positive atheism. It is true that atheism is not a religion, it is as much a religion as bald as a hair colour. And the thing that follows from this, it seems, in many people's minds, theistic or otherwise, is that once this is removed, a void is left in its place. However, I've also heard it said that when you remove a religion from someone's mind, it's like removing a disease, and therefore it doesn't need to be replaced with anything. I'd like to present something today that I think addresses this. So let's look at this question of if we remove religion and we need to replace it with something, what are we going to replace it with? Well, before we even answer that question, we should look at the question itself. If there is a need to replace it with something, we, we need to look deeper than that. And one metaphor that comes to mind quite often uh, when I'm thinking about religious thinking is that it's a form of emotional immaturity. In other words, you need to have that parent figure there at all times. So a way of looking at this might be that God is a parent figure that takes responsibility, in other words, uh, takes responsibility in lieu of the religious thinker having that responsibility themselves. So don't get me wrong, I'm all for quote-unquote childish activities like climbing trees and being wacky and you know doing silly characters and so forth, but I think ultimately to be an adult you have to let go of the, the ultimate um, parent illusion, in, in other words, God. So atheism is great in that it uh, doesn't defer responsibility to some sort of parent figure. It does force you to take control of things yourself. Now this is scary for some people and that, I think, is the, uh, the crux of the problem. So a good place to start in terms of positive atheism is to get connected with the atheist community. This community, I think you'll find, is friendly, diverse, and won't give you pat answers, but will show you that there is life beyond an absence of religion. Skepticism, in my opinion, leads to atheism, which can, of course, lead to atheism. But skepticism is uh, an ongoing process, so if you want to replace your religious thinking with something, replace it with skepticism. It won't promise an afterlife, it won't promise um, pat, easy answers to life's difficult or even mundane questions. But on the, on the other hand, it's a very positive process that you can go through. A process that can reveal to you the full richness of the universe. <laughs> Another aspect of positive atheism to investigate is secular humanism. It is, in my mind, the perfect response to the all-too-often trotted-out tract of, hey, we need religion for our morals, don't we? We know that religious texts, and let's just keep it to the, the, the Bible for now, are full of absolutely abhorrent um, moral um, edicts. Rape, you know, murder... Um, infanticide, I mean, it's it's pretty grim. And of course, there are some good parts in it as well. It's amazing how there can be so much bad in there and people go, oh yeah, but it's got this good stuff in there. So obviously they're going through uh, a moral filter of their own. They're, they're taking the parts of the Bible and saying, this part's good, this part's bad. And how do they do that? Well, of course they do that from their own innate morals, their own sense of right and wrong. So we can dismiss with the morals come from the Bible claim um, straight away. So when the question arises, well, what would you do without the Bible for your morals? It's, it's a non-question. I mean, it, it, it is instantly dismissed by the, the logical inconsistency of the question itself, or the implications of the question. So secular humanism is something that's definitely worth checking out. It, it attempts to essentially engineer what we want to have in our society. You know, all of the good stuff, all of the reasonable, nice things that any reasonable, nice person would expect to, uh, to um, be able to count on. If we take it that religion is a mind virus and one that we believe is destructive to society, we need to do what we can to make atheism as positive a virus as we can. Let's just say we're talking about spreading positive atheism. How do we do it? Well, we need to make it sexy. And I don't mean, you know, clothes off sexy. I mean seductive. I mean an idea that uh, is, um, is enticing. Atheism and skepticism and critical thinking all have pretty bad names, it has to be said. So I'll give you an analogy for what I mean here. For somebody who is uncritical, who believes in magic, who believes in the supernatural, who is a conspiracy thinker, here's what a critical thinker might sound like. Blah, 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 muffle, muffle, blah, 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 you're wrong. 
It's all people here when we talk about whatever brand of nonsense they're on about. Whilst there is certainly a need for polemic atheists and polemic skeptical thinkers in our community, there is also, I believe, a need for the calm patient type. Michael Shermer perhaps represents the pinnacle of this sort of thing. <laughs> Of all of the attributes of positive atheism, which might include calm and um, you know being generally nice and, and being very patient with people, I think perhaps the most important is creativity. So you can think of creative ways, for example, of remaining calm and think of creative ways of being nice and, and uh, creative ways of um, showing people whose mind you wish to change um, how to change that mind. There is a barrier to them accepting those ideas. So one positive approach here is to, as I say, try and, as best we can, at least get some appreciation of, of what they're perceiving of what we're saying. So it, it's probably pretty obvious that if they had the mindset, the toolkit, the skeptical toolkit, a decent understanding of scientific and mathematical and philosophical concepts, maybe leave the maths out, then they would probably come to the realization that the mindset that we're talking about is, is a perfectly reasonable and, and a desirable one. But we have to realize that the people in the other camp have exactly the same perception of their own thought processes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's short presentation on positive atheism. And in the spirit of discovering that positive atheist community, I'm going to put a list of links in the sidebar to great sites. And the first of those would be The Atheist Experience from Austin, Texas. They have a blog and they have a regular um, podcast that's available in both video and audio format. Related to this would be the non-profits, uh, a, a little bit more polemic than the atheist experience and well worth listening to. That's an audio-only podcast. Then there's my buddies, the Skeptics Testament from Melbourne, Australia. They talk in detail about specific passages in, in the, the, um, the Bible and other holy scriptures. Another great podcast to check out, of course, would be the Skeptics Guide to the Universe and their companion podcast, the Skeptics um, Guide to the Universe 5 by 5 five skeptics talking about skeptical issues for five minutes. Another thing to mention here about listening to podcasts would be, if you can stand it, listen to some religious podcasts and cast your skeptical mind over them. So the final piece of self-promotion here is that on April 10th, 2010, on the 365 Days of Astronomy podcast, again, links in the sidebar there, I'll be giving um, the, the day's podcast and it's on practical astronomy. So once again, that might be another part of positive atheism, mightn't it? You know, that astronomy is uh, will give you a true sense of the awe of the universe. So I hope you've enjoyed today's short presentation on positive atheism. Please stay tuned for more and I'll see you next time. Out and out belief in, uh, you know, the big man. Again, man tells you something, doesn't it? Uh, I, I see myself personally as a personal person that sees themselves personally. And uh, personally speaking, I think that... Uh,